The greatest poison to the Christian soul is unforgiveness. By far. I don't think there's anything on this planet that destroys people's souls, their mental, emotional, spiritual standing more than a lack of forgiveness. And all of us have experienced deep pain in this life. And to hold on to that, I've heard it once said that unforgiveness is like eating rat poison and expecting the rat to die. It kills you. So in this video, we're going to talk about what is biblical forgiveness? What does God say is sufficient or what, how do you know whether you've truly forgiven someone or not? It's an incredibly important question that I don't think many people can answer. Like, have you actually forgiven that person? And we're going to talk about what the scriptures say, what Jesus says, and then how you can know maybe some signs, some telltales of whether you've forgiven them or whether you haven't. So let's talk about a definition of forgiveness. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, hit that notification bell. I love talking about Jesus. I love making the Bible come alive to people. And I love talking about important topics like this one. Topics like this that don't clearly get lined up and, and people don't necessarily have um, a clear answer for, yet it affects us every single day. We have all these terms in Christianity and so few of the really popular terms we have a really great grasp of. And that's the goal of this video. I want you to have a really great grasp of what forgiveness means. So what does Jesus say is forgiveness? If you look all through the scriptures, Jesus says, if you don't forgive others their sin, I can't forgive you your sin. Something in the kingdom, something in the spirit gets blocked when you don't forgive other people their sin. That's a really big deal. The fact that Jesus points out the one thing that blocks your forgiveness from him is unforgiveness towards others. So if you even sense an inkling right now, maybe I haven't forgiven that person. You should probably explore that because God's forgiveness might be blocked towards you and people might be like, oh, there's no way. Nothing can block God's forgiveness. Jesus literally says it. He lines it out very clearly. If you do not forgive others their sin, I can't forgive yours. So what is the ultimate picture of forgiveness? It's the cross, right? And what is the last thing Jesus says on the cross? He says the word tetelestai, which means it is finished. But that term also is much deeper. You see, people would shout tetelestai when um, a war had been won. They would claim it's finished. The war has been won. Tetelestai. Or if uh, there was an outstanding debt in business and the debt got paid in full, they'd shake hands and they'd say tetelestai. The debt has been paid. Same thing in a courtroom. If the verdict was not guilty and that person was free, tetelestai. The, the, the crime has been sufficiently paid. The debt has been paid in full. The war has been won. It is now finished. That's what that means. So when you're saying it is finished, the same way Jesus has said it is finished to you, because he was talking about your sin, right? In a sense, he's making a claim of forgiveness. What you are saying is I am no longer holding them accountable. They are no, no longer guilty in my sight. They're now uh, completely clean. There are, no, there are no strings attached here. I forgive the debt. I let them go. I no longer want to be at war with them. I no longer feel like they owe me anything right? You are severing ties. This goes back to the year of Jubilee, which is such a forgotten law in the Old Testament, where every 49th year, all debts would be canceled, all slaves would be made free. And when Jesus comes on the scene, he says, I have come to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. What does that mean? That means that he's proclaiming Jubilee. He's proclaiming forgiveness, which is the kingdom of God. And so the reason why he says, I can't forgive you your sin if you don't forgive others is because you can't walk in the kingdom of God unless you're walking in Jubilee. You can't walk in the kingdom unless you walk in forgiveness. And you can't forgive others until you've been forgiven in your heart. So it starts with you. It's the kindness of God that leads us into repentance. So if you truly want to change your life and forgive other people, it starts with by believing the gospel, that what? That is no longer, uh, that, that your sin is no longer counted against you. That it's been cast as far as the east is from the west. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. And so if you're continuing to submit to the law, that yoke of slavery, thinking you have to still add up to God, you're under slavery. 
you're eating the rat poison and you're blocking the forgiveness of God because you're trying to, you know, act like, uh, like, like, uh, they still owe you something when God has said, you don't owe me anything anymore. The debt's been canceled on the cross. And now your charge is to go into the world and act like me. So if you're not doing that, you're not walking with Jesus. You're not walking in the kingdom. So how do you know? How do you really know whether you've forgiven them? Well, I think there's a few telltales. My, uh, my old mentor was a Navy chaplain and he explained to me the term telltale. A telltale is uh, when a ship is being docked to port, they would have these big honking like metal uh, cords that would basically make sure the ship didn't like float away, right? It attached it to the dock. But oftentimes what would happen is if there was an imbalance in the ship, that big metal cord would snap and just like literally start slicing people in half. And so what they invented were these things called telltales. And a telltale was a little cord that wrapped around that big cord. And so if there was ever an imbalance, that little guy would snap and people would be like, okay, let's get the heck off this ship. There's an imbalance. So you have telltales in your life. For me, I'll be really vulnerable. When I'm overworking, I like to drink. When I'm insecure, I'm tempted towards pornography. Those are my telltales. I know that something's deeper going on. And so it's not necessarily about the sin. It's about knowing your telltales before you sin. So I'll, I'll tell you this. If you have unforgiveness, here are a few telltales. Number one, you gossip about that person. If you can't go directly to them instead of going to other people about them, it tells you you likely have unforgiveness towards that person. The second one, which is huge for me, if you are having fake arguments with that person when you're in the shower or in the car and you're like just letting them have it with these zingers and again, this is fake. You're making this thing up in your head and your imagination. It tells you you have unforgiveness towards them. And then the last thing I would say is a telltale is if you have bitterness in your heart towards them. If you don't wish them well, it tells you you have unforgiveness. It tells you that you still have some bitterness in your heart that needs to be dealt with. So what do you do about it? Number one, you got to get to the root. I have a full ministry of coaches that would love to walk alongside you. You can go to sharethestruggle.org slash coaching. I'll put it in the details below as well. Go connect with someone, get to the root because there might be some stuff going on in your past that you need to work through and you need to have some spiritual disciplines and some practices. Iron sharpens iron in, a, in a, an abundance of counselors, the victory's won, so don't take this lightly. Go get help. But the most important thing is believe the gospel about yourself first. It's the kindness of God that will change your life according to Romans 2, 4. So if you haven't first received his forgiveness, you cannot pour from an empty cup. You first have to be filled up by that forgiveness and then out of it will flow forgiveness. The forgiver in you will come out. It won't be you. It will be the spirit of God, the forgiver bubbling up out of you and forgive, forgiving other people. It's gotta be heaven. It can't be your sin nature. You have to operate in the kingdom of God, walking by the spirit of God under the power of God, and then you'll be able to forgive.